Hi everybody and welcome back to Vanessa's podcast. Today I'm going to uh, read um, some of a report of uh, a murder case where a detective hired a psychic um, to find the body. Visually, I had almost the movie that a body was thrown over there. This man is on a search for a body. I see death by knife. Troy Griffin is a self-proclaimed psychic detective. I have in my mind a vision of where I think her body may be. Troy says he uses his psychic powers to solve crime. I've worked on about 100 cases overall. So I'm going to read about... Um about Toy Griffin searching for a body. He brought search dogs and a team of volunteers with him. But his main set of tools are his visions. Griffin, in a self-proclaimed psychic detective, sh sh shunning the crystal ball, tarot card and tea leaves of his fellow intuitive. He says he uses psychic power to solve crimes. I work on a hundred cases overall. He said he built a business out of bringing the paranormal into police work, charging up $250 an hour for his investigating team work. He recently worked on a missing case that gripped the nation. Kelsey Schelling, 21, was eight weeks pregnant and disappeared on February 2013 after making a late night drive from her home in Denver to see her boyfriend in Colorado. Her family never saw or heard from her again. Peace and prayers for Kelsey Schilling. Four years after her unsolved disappearance, Schilling mother's Laura um, Saxton is still searching for a daughter and is grateful for Griffin's help. Using Griffin's supposed psychic intuition and some anonymous tips, they searched a sparsely populated area in Pueblo, Colorado, where Griffin was trying to clue in on any sign of Schilling. Griffin says his vision are like watching TV, but just little clips. And he'll get overwhelming feeling of, of nervousness and anxiety. It's nothing to do with the victims. It's just how I know, how I use my direction, he said. When I pick up the feeling, I have to go and follow that. So I have in my mind a vision of where I think her body may be. That's what I'm searching for. When I contacted Kelsey, it was more just apologies. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean for it to happen. I didn't know, Griffin said. Laura is never going to have closure unless she found something. In these six years, he's been in business out of 100 case. Griffin claims he has an 18 to 20% success rate. When you look at murder case and unsolved missing person, there's very few percentage that actually get solved. But of the roughly 100 case Griffin claims he worked on, Griffin could not provide one example to ABC News to verify when he contributed to police investigation. Even with the Kelsey Schelling case, when contacted, the Pueblo Police Department told ABC News they had no official contact with Griffin and were unaware of his investigation. He said, I believe when he's within a few minutes of your home, a few miles, maybe five miles of your home, I see him surrounded by the water and a few miles from your home, Shea said. I was like, water? 
It was no water on the route that we were searching. Tragically, Danny Shea vehicle had gone off the road on a dangerous stretch of the road in Colorado and was found two days later by passerby Rhonda Shea, Credy Griffin, with helping them find closure. It does cross your mind that this is a little bit out there, she said. It's not exactly what mainstream people believe or think. It was desperation. You get des desperate at some points. You grasping at straws. You don't care. You just want you love one back. Yeah, and that that's you know for anybody. Um, anybody wants to answer. Anybody wants something. And I'm sure that a lot of people who went through things like that, you know, hope that they could be something more done in uh, in finding um, the body of somebody who disappeared or being able to grieve. And I'm sure everybody will want to get any type of hopes and, you know, go to a um, higher psychic and a mentalist and anybody who can give you some clues who, who care. Uh, Psychic-based crime solvers are not a new phenomena. Um, there was five seasons worth on the court, um, TV reality, psychic detective. They have been other hits such as The Mentalist and Medium. Um, they were even spoofed on uh, South Park. But psychic reading, especially those in public eyes, have not been exempt from scrutiny. One example was a 2004 reading famed psychic Sylvia Brown perform on The Mantel Williams Show. For the mother of a 10 uh, of then missing girl Amanda Berry, uh, Brown told Berry's mother that her daughter was dead, but Nine years later, in 2013, she was found alive. Uh, prior to her death in 2013, Brown released a statement saying, in part, have been more uh, right than wrong. If ever there was a time to be grateful and relieved for being mistaken, this is the time. So this just proves to you that, you know, not only psychic do make mistakes, but there's also real psychic and uh, not real psychic and and um and charlatans out there so you always got to be aware it doesn't mean you have to um to be too spectacle uh on the matter but still barry's mother died believing her daughter was dead when she wasn't critical brown a grief vampire taking advantage of a grieving parents uh griffin denied that's what he's doing in the shitting case I waited for a mom to tell me what she thought, he said. I don't say you're dead or you're alive. I say I have a feeling. I'm never going to tell you if you're dead or alive. If I feel strongly, I'm still not going to tell you. But he did tell Shelling's mother how she was murdered, saying that he believes strangulation was involved. If it turns out he's wrong, Griffin said, it would be time for him to consider a different career. So, uh, I'm going to stop there and I'll see if, let's put it back a little music. And uh, I'm going to go um, further and look for something a little more interesting to read. Uh, it's always good to have different sight, uh, insights. Um, all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I hope everybody is having a great day. And uh, here I found something interesting. Uh, quick and easy 12 step uh, cheat sheets. Uh, basically, it's uh, 12 step for uh, fighting up the bad mood. So let's get to it. Number one drop. Any nasty, mean, or bizarro thought. Hang up, disconnect, shake free. Disown any yucky thought. That's a good one. 
Number two, if it's dark, turn on a light. If it's nice out, seek some sunshine. If you have a sunshine, like I do, <laughs> then you don't really care, but it's still nice to have. If you don't have sunshine, look for sunshine somewhere. There must be a light somewhere. And, um, and yeah, don't stay in the dark too much. It, it does gray up your you mind. So number three, pray if you, um, if, if you are uh, Christian, Catholic, whatever religion you may be, uh, it's a good occasion for you to pray. If you don't believe in God, pray in spirituality of good in the world, uh, or just pray on your soul um, to restore um, its faith. Uh, pray that God send a team of angels to assist you. So, um, again, if you're not... Um, a believer, uh, then just simply uh, pray uh, to have all these um, positive uh, people and soul around you. Um, four, mentally cut away any perceived darkness from around you. So it's easy to say cut away. Some people have more negative around them than others. Uh, so it's of course out of the one who have to deal with 90% than someone who deals with maybe 20% of darkness. Uh, but it's still um, even more of a reason for you to cut it away and to learn uh, to learn this as a skill and to become better at it. Uh, the more you cut away the, the the darkness around you, uh, less you're going to pay attention of it. Number five, get up and move around. Wash some dishes, uh, you know, uh, do some gardening, um, clean up your room, clean up the house, uh, go shopping, uh, just go for a walk, um, go visit something. Number six, shut off your imagination, focus on here and now, definitely stop roaring and fretting. Uh, yeah, because uh, sometimes when people stress and worry too much, they, they stay still and they get in their mind too much and uh, then they just start having, you know, this um, set of thoughts and they just become uh, just weirder and weirder and then just, you know, you just start, you know, uh, thinking the worst. So you want to be in the moment. And, and just stop uh, getting into your head. Uh, number seven, go grab something uh, healthy to eat, drink, get some hot tea, decaf hot tea, uh, good quality. Uh, there's lots of them out there, peppermint, mint, uh, chamomile, uh, berries. Uh, they all have great, um, great quality in them uh, to relax you, uh, relax your mind. Uh, drink plenty of water, eat some fruit, some vegetable, uh, distract your mind with a positive number eight, distract your mind with a positive book or magazine. Uh, so if you're too tired to read, just pick something very easy and you can uh, just relax your mom, mind or maybe do a quest, um, uh, a quiz, yeah, just um, or scribble something on paper or just draw something, paint something that always... Um, just uh, get you out of the clutter and the stress. Um, number nine, get a tape or CD. Listen, some good music. Music is the best. Music uh, works every time. Get something and really boost your mood. And, and uh, you will see the change. You see how you feel in your whole body much better. Number ten, count your blessing. List good and beautiful things from your life. Uh, you might not see any, but that's because you don't uh, pay attention to them or you're not aware of them. So instead of comparing yourself to other people, count your blessing, realize how much you got, how much you've been giving, how much have you been giving, because you always get back what you give, you know. So uh, if you give very little, you're going to receive very little. So it works both ways. Uh, Eleven, do something nice for somebody. Um, uh, example, go write a loving email later, thank you Kat, um, a report of Cash's friendly attitude to management, uh, make some, somebody smile, uh, uh, give some flour to your neighbor, volunteer at the soup kitchen, uh, give to charity, uh, smile at somebody, open the door, pray for your friend, uh, people who, who's having trouble right now, care for someone else in a way that it's absorbing and helping.